bright lights. I should probably be wearing a suit. Uh, Flintstones. No one even knows what that is anymore, right? Ah, the wheel. I think it was uh, at the beginning of uh, this technology, I say it over and over that I believe that uh, we're like a bunch of cavemen and women. And we just, someone invented the wheel and it's rolling down the hill and everyone's laughing because it's rolling so far compared to anything else we've ever seen. And I think that's where we are right now. Oh. <laughs> And uh, sometimes, I think there's a wrong slide for this place. Uh, you know, the inventor or the innovator or the person who can pick up the uh, technology faster than anyone else tries to explain it to other people and say, oh, we can help out, but everyone's usually stuck in their way. And uh, it's our job to break through. Some people, before the Industrial Revolution, were on a donkey, and uh, the train came along, and they go, oh, look at that infernal machine. We're like the train during the Industrial Revolution, and a lot of them don't want to get on the train. They want to get on a donkey. They want to stay on their donkey, nice, warm, quiet donkey. Um, but I don't need to tell that to these, to you folks. You're already in. You're already on the train. So some of you are going to become uh, Vanderbilts, Rockefellers, Carnegies, build a railroad. Uh, oh, this is Orville and Wilbur Wright's bicycle shop. They were, uh, they sold bicycles. If they asked for permission from Boss Hogg over there to fly an airplane, which no one ever heard about. I don't know if he'd give it to him. I say that to many people. So we're here in the uh, Polycon where we're pushing uh, se uh, securitized type uh, tokenization. And a lot of people are gonna try to stop us and everyone here, they're going to try to stop you. There's Boss Hogg over here from uh, Dukes of Hazard. Does anyone know what Dukes of Hazard is? <laughs> but these guys didn't go and ask for the permission. Or if they did, they uh, got him to say yes. The mayor uh, and the Wright brothers from their bicycle shop did build the airplane. So we, as innovators, have to usher in this new world where many people are stuck in their way, and we're going to have to explain to them where they're going to uh, actually feel good about adopting. And I think, um, you know, with all these tokens, the value of the tokens going up and stuff, that they'd like to get involved because their greed is gonna fuel this uh, uh, monetary revolution. And then we go into the Jetsons. Oh, that was my first computer. I had to build it with a soldering iron. That was, that's not my modem, but my modem looked worse. We did, um, for many years, I sold uh, political data and uh, campaign management software I wrote. And uh, there's just a little background. Yeah, I told you guys I had about 12,000 domain names I bought when I went, thought I was crazy. Actually, as a matter of fact, I built uh, No More Hotels, GetARoom.com, and Livery Cab, but... <laughs> well, you built Livery Cab. <laughs> Those guys did it. Back in the 90s. We have a crew from uh, the mid-90s, which I'm pretty proud of. We're still together. We made a lot of money. We lost a lot of money. We made it back. So Ron Paul pulled us into this. Uh, that's why we didn't uh, 
get the Uber because we all ran off and uh, ran Ron Paul's digital campaign. And uh, so our livery cab project we put on the shelf and then Uber was worth like $100 billion. But uh, I think our, the plan for us, the universe's plan for us was to bring in, because if we founded an Uber, I don't think we would have built the Bitcoin Center and uh, I think the world would have been a lot different. Um, so this one quote really caught me and I threw everything away for Ron Paul. I said, we've been overtaxed, overregulated, and overrun by bureaucrats. The founding fathers would be ashamed of us for what we're putting up with. That's pretty revolutionary. That was Ron Paul. So when I heard that, I said, oh, I gotta help that guy. And uh, we helped him. Oh, that's me and my brother. Without permission, like, well, permissionless. So let's say permissionless uh, innovation. Uh, without, the internet was permissionless innovation. And uh, people can build whatever they want on the internet. And uh, that's why I believe the internet is what it is today. Well, we built this 100 feet next to the stock exchange there without permission. I told you that the other night. Self-executing wills. We built uh, some smart contracts years ago, 2014. Downloaded the master, uh, death, master death master the master death file from the Social Security database, and my mom was on there, and she didn't die or anything. Uh, she's still around, you know, kicking. And I called her up. I said, "Mom, are you okay?" She's like, "Yeah." So they got you dead over here because the contract kept paying out. I'm like, "What the hell's going on?" And then we found that it had her down as uh, deceased. Uh, we built Vote Watcher. We did a bunch of, uh, we're always early. We did a lot of elections down in Texas. We did the Iowa caucus. We recorded all the stuff on the Bitcoin blockchain. We probably bloated it up. We, uh, we, as a matter of fact, we got a patent on blockchain voting. <laughs> we got it. And then uh, this company, what's his name? What's the name of that company? I don't know. A big bad dude tried to take our stuff, but we wouldn't sell it to him. So we're protecting that from the big bad wolf. We build these ATM machines. We got them all over the world. When the fees aren't that high, we have them on. Oh, that's me. That's me doing kung fu. Why'd you put that in there? That's me right here with the afro. Are ICOs a bubble? I think ICOs are the pin that are gonna pop the legacy financial system bubble. I think you guys have a big responsibility. <laughs> have a big responsibility to take over the back smoke filled rooms that have been handed down, the power has been handed down for generations. And uh, they make more money when there's more uh, secrecy, and we're all about clarity, and uh, that's our job now. Ah, so we went over, what was that? That was like the World Government Summit. I don't know why they had me speaking there, but they did. I had a bunch of guys from royal families and stuff because we have this project called ZAP and uh, ZAP.org. And uh, we oracleize, info well, we take data. A lot of people say Oracle, oh, that's the database, right? I'm like, no. So we take data from the real world, the three-dimensional world, and we trigger events on uh, smart contracts trigger financial events, so we have a bunch of uh, sensors and uh, pipelines and stuff that we, uh, pipes that we build that go into pipelines. And uh, people can 
figure out, because if something goes through one piece of the pipeline, it's owned by this guy. And if it goes through that piece of the pipeline, 17 nephews get a cut of it. <laughs> That's where I was. They were explaining it to us. We're trying to figure something out. Um, and not just oil and gas, but anything you think of, we're building these soil samples, samplers, but whatever. It's good. <laughs> what do you want? You know, I'm always early. I mean, always. I don't know how to explain it. I see it coming, and uh, I believe this is the next thing because uh, I'm early. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. it just, it's just in my brain all the time now, and I see all the things that are going to be triggered in the future. When we go into the Jetsons, it, we're, our lives are going to be a financial instrument. We're going to be walking through three-dimensional space, interacting, and um, financial um, events are going to occur. I mean, they occur now when we walk through, but they're not provable, not transparent. They're not, you know, we have to, de we have to think about uh, intermediaries and stuff. All the intermediaries are going to be gone, and we're going to be walking through three-dimensional space, and uh, our contracts and other people's we're in, intermingle with other people's on contracts. That's another site. That's joking. Uh, wow, I went through the slides pretty fast. So, I think uh, everyone in this room has a great responsibility to usher in this new world uh, transparent world where in the past, you know, governance was top down. I mean, before governance, you know, we all, everyone was pretty much equal except whoever had the bigger club. And then uh, governance occurred and uh, with technology, they created, you know, currencies were created where the government was the only one allowed to make the currency and the financial instrument. They had to bless the financial instruments, stuff like that, like we're fighting for here in this convention here. I mean, there's going to be a lot of hiccups, a lot of roadblocks, but it's our responsibility to usher in this new world where we'll be free from the tyrannical, uh, back smoke filled rooms of uh, nepotism. And uh, everyone will have a shot. And I think the world is a very bountiful place. I know in the 50s, only one person had to work. And everyone ate well. And there were two cars in the garage and stuff. And now uh, the whole family, five people work. And they can't make ends meet. And I don't believe that has anything to do with the world uh, did not lose you know, 80% of the food on the surface. As a matter of fact, we have machinery that's creating abundance, and yet we have financial systems that uh, are oppressing our minds with uh, uh, the opposite of abundance. What's that? Scarcity. Not, not our kind of scarcity, not digital scarcity. So I believe that it's our responsibility to walk tall and be bold. And uh, when, when you hear stuff in the news, oh, 200 subpoenas went out and all that shit. I mean, we have to fight. And uh, it's up, you know, you just got to, you only have one life to live. What are you going to do? You're going to keel over? You're going to go to sleep at this time? Or you're going to be frightened? some guy with a piece of paper. It's your responsibility. You know that this is going to usher in a, a brave new world, you know, a great new world, where your actions are going to make a difference. They're going to make the difference. And it's up to you and me and uh, all of us in this room and the guys hanging outside because we know what can be done. And we know that there's powers that are going to come out this year against us. And we're going to stand here. And uh, you know how they said that 
the, the things are too big to fail, the banks and all those uh, institutions are too big to fail. Well, I think, uh, I think liberty, liberty is too big to fail. Financial liberty, this is our declaration of monetary independence. And uh, financial liberty is too big to fail. We are too big to fail. Blockchain is too big to fail. Bitcoin is too big to fail. The ICOs are too big to fail. And I think we're here, and that's it. We're still standing here. I'm still standing here. You know, that's it. That's all I got to say.